my hashtag that I use all the time is called pay attention, right? So okay. um, if you could kind of dive into that, that would be great because I'm actually working on a, a course in a series right now. It's part of the pay attention series where um, we're just going to dive a little deeper into certain things. So it's something that's kind of helped me. So I would definitely like to talk about that. Oh yeah, that sounds incredibly interesting. And I will definitely make sure I bring that up because I would love to learn a little bit more about that as well. Um, but to kind of start off, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you, a former WNBA, which is super amazing. And now you're here on Realty in South Florida, which is super awesome. It's such a great market. So I'd love to hear a little bit more. how do you come to where you are today? Oh my gosh. So here's, here's my story. Um, to Carl Williams, born and raised in Hollywood, Florida. Um, I attended South Broward High School, won two state championships, championships there in basketball. Yes. yes thank you. Uh, my sophomore season and my uh, senior season, um, my junior season, we were number one in the state and we ended up losing um, one game in the entire season. And that one game that we lost was the game to go to the state championship and um, it was more of a matchup issue than anything else. Um, so we ended up losing that game, but you know we came back the next year stronger, more hungrier, and um, we won um, by a large spread. <laughs> so it wasn't um, my first my first state championship. We won by one point, uh, low scoring game. We knew the team; they knew us. Um, so both both teams were very familiar with one another. So in that aspect, you know, you're playing uh, kind of playing mistake free basketball. And, uh, you know, you have to really work the system and know your opponent. And we won that by one point. But my senior year, we ended up winning by probably 30. So um, it was definitely a drastic change. But from there, I got a, a scholarship to Texas A&M, a full scholarship to Texas A&M to play basketball. And I broke many records at the school, in the conference, in the NCAA as well. Uh, I'm currently the only player in NCAA history to have one steal and one assist recorded in each game. Um, I had the most minutes played, male or female, at Texas A&M. I was the first player, male or female, to ever record a triple-double. So very proud of some of wow. the accolades that I have, yes. Yeah, definitely. That makes a lot of sense. That's incredible. Huge congratulations. So uh, from there, um, I got drafted to San Antonio. Now, I was uh, predicted to go in the first round, the number 13th pick. It didn't happen that way. Um, mm -hmm. I went in the third round, the 34th pick, um, you know, and, and when that happened, you know, I kind of felt a little sad because, you know, when you're expecting to do one thing and then it happens another way. But I also capitalize and maximize on my opportunity of just getting drafted, because when you think about it on a bigger picture, there are hundreds of thousands of student athletes trying to get to the WNBA, which only has 144 roster spots. So I was able to make the 144, which I'm very proud of. Um, you know, at the time, you're not thinking of it in that aspect, but very proud of that. And during my time of playing professionally, my sports agent told me to get my real estate license. I knew nothing about real estate. Um, I didn't even know why she told me that. But it's because California, which is where she was based at, is a hot market. South Florida at that time, hot market. So, you know, she told me that we can refer deals to each other um, and we could just get paid merely by referring a deal. So I was like, you know what, whatever. Let me just get my license. Um, I got my license and um, the rest is history. I've been doing real estate uh, for a while. I actually was doing it part time because after I finished playing basketball professionally in 2012, I started coaching basketball. You know, I, I stayed close to the comfort zone and we know everything that you want is outside of your comfort zone. So when the pandemic hit, um, I decided to go fully into real estate because I couldn't coach. I couldn't train kids. I couldn't do the tournaments that I was doing. So I said, you know what, let me just make a pivot, make a crossover and um, crossed over into real estate, which is something that I already knew because I educated myself on the topic when I got my license and I was doing deals here and there, but I fully engulfed myself in it and um, the rest is history. That is incredible. That's super awesome. And that's kind of, I would say, a little bit of a funny way to get into real estate. Just someone being like, hey, just get your real estate license. That sounds like fun. You're in basketball. That makes sense. And I think that's super awesome that you also not only were given that advice, but you act on that advice. Because I can think of a lot of instances that you'd be like, why would I get my real estate license? I'm good. Like you mentioned, your comfort zone. It's easier to stay there. And it's super awesome that you're able to shift and shift so successfully. That's super cool. Yeah, well, you know, the thing about it is basketball for me and, and many others as well, it's a connector, right? Basketball mm -hmm. connects you to 
so many different things, but basketball also teaches you a lot of life lessons. And mm-hmm. those lessons that I learned playing basketball and excelling at such a high level, I was able to incorporate those right into my real estate career. And it was kind of easy and turnkey um, for me. Uh, I was a point guard in basketball. So that means I'm kind of directing people, guiding people, helping them, trying to tell them what to do, what places to be in. It just fits in real estate too. It went hand in hand. So That's super awesome. That's actually great that you mentioned that because that leads into the question I had, which was, I'm sure there's a lot of differences between basketball and real estate, but is there anything that you, when you started into real estate that you had learned from basketball that you applied in real estate? You're like, oh my gosh, that's super fun. That's super funny. This is easier because I had that, I had to do something like that in basketball. And this is why I can do it here in real estate. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, the thing about it is, you know, when you're working with other agents, they're essentially not on your team per se, but Mm -hmm. we are on the same team because we're trying to close the same transaction. So I look at that person as that's my teammate. And although we're representing two different clients, we still are trying to get to the same common goal. Same thing in basketball. You know, you might not like your teammate and that's okay, but you have to respect the position. You have to respect the person. So that fit directly into real estate. Um, when I learned about, you know, how do I, how do I do a comparative market analysis when it comes to real estate? I know that sounds so scary and intimidating, but it's just comparing properties to properties, the same property. And that's what we did with scouting reports in, in basketball. You know, you have to know your opponent. You have to know what they do, their strengths, their weaknesses. So that's what the CMA is what we call the comparative market analysis. That's what that did for me. So a lot of, a lot of similarities, maybe different terminology, but a lot of the same similarities. Yeah, that's super awesome. I was a figure skater for 10 years. And now oh. that I'm in business, there's a lot of interesting and fun things that I have learned at figure skating that now I'm doing in like financial services and it's like that is such a weird connection (laughs) but you know when you grow up in those sports environments a lot of things can transfer to the real world that people don't really realize when they just kind of look at it so it's super cool that you mentioned that you're able to learn so much from basketball and use it towards real estate. Yeah. And I think even with figure skating, like you said, we're all athletes, right? And we we all have these intangibles that companies want. Major companies want what we have. Number one, we know how to work with a team. That's cooperation. We're coachable. Someone can teach us. We're easy to learn. We're quick decision makers because within our sport, we have to learn how to make decisions quick or it's going to hurt us if we don't make a decision quick. So, you know, we learn how to make good decisions quick on the fly we can adjust in any situation so it's it's a lot that you can do with an athlete and i'm not saying you can't do this with uh, an average person but right. the athlete is kind of trained to make decisions this way and to function this way and you know we have those intangibles so definitely use them yeah definitely and another thing about athletes is especially for those who are more in team leadership aspects is that they can be really influential. And who are here, you have a hashtag and a movement. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about that because that's super awesome. And I love what people are doing now with hashtags. And I'd love to hear a little bit more about what inspired you and where are you going with it? Okay, so um, right now I'm on the pay attention, right? So uh, pay attention and from that grew um, my APERI, A-P-E-R-I. So, Pay attention came to me, um, you know, I have a friend who, you know, he saw me always posting a hashtag of something different and that hashtag was stay woke, right? So, you know, it's a cultural thing for sure. Um, So he told me, it was like, you know, you can't stay woke, you gotta sleep, right? And I'm like, that makes perfect sense. You gotta get sleep at some point. So he was like, you know, sometimes when you're in school and you're not listening to what the teachers say, they may come up to you, hey, pay attention. And he was like, I think you need to go with that. So, you know, it made sense. I went with that. And it's, it's just been something that has been, people always come up to me now, hey, Miss, pay attention. But uh, <laughs> it's definitely something to um, keep at the forefront and I keep at my forefront because you need to pay attention to the things in front of you and the things within you. So mm-hmm. the APERI, the A-P-E-R-I, is a mantra that I've come up with. And it's about assessment, position, expectation, role, and individuality. Wow, that's super amazing. I love that, especially the whole pay attention part. I think that is really important, especially you're mentioning, you know, paying attention to what's in front of you and what's inside of you, because I know a lot of people pay attention to things in the past or things that don't matter as much. It's like, hey, you know, we should wake up, but we should also sleep, but we also, when we are awake, pay attention to those. 
Absolutely. And when you're sleeping, pay attention to your dreams. Um, mm. There's visions there. You know, when we dream, we do get visions. And sometimes we can act on those visions and make those visions come to reality because our subconscious mind doesn't know that we're asleep. So when that event is happening in your mind, you know, your mind, your brain thinks it's, it's reality. But that's how, you know, for me, I achieved a lot of dreams and a lot of my goals because I was able to visualize them. I had to see myself in the present form, living that life that I wanted to live. And, you know, my mind couldn't fathom whether I was there yet or not. I knew if I was there or not, but, you know, just having visualization and acting upon it. A lot of times we have things in our heads. We never act upon it. So it's not going to happen. Definitely. That's really important. Visualization and having that in front of you, because, you know, without it, then it just seems like a hopeless dream and something you'll just kind of forget and leave in the past. But being able to think about it, see it, feel it. You know, touch it being like okay what will happen when I'm actually there when I've actually accomplished that how will I feel what will it feel like you know physically or mentally or emotionally and those are really powerful absolutely and in the a period that I, I told you about I actually just got it from like what happened how did I become successful in basketball what happened when I first started playing um my coaches had to assess me that was me going to the tryout assessment you know right. the assessment is all about you it's who you are as a person what you bring to the table, like that is solely all about you. Then once you're assessed, then we can put you in position. So once you know your position, we can give you an expectation. Once you know the expectation of your position, now here's your role. Now that we've given you the role, where's your individuality and your integrity that you bring to the position that you're in? So it just made sense. It just flowed for me. And I'm hoping that I can share that with the masses in the world because I, one prayer that I always had, I pray to God that he just uses me as a vessel to bless others. I've been saying that prayer since I was a kid and I feel like I'm in transformation and it's happening and I just want to keep doing it as, to the best as I can as the, yeah. at the highest level. Definitely. And I can see it in front of me that you are definitely committed to it and you're definitely doing the right things towards it, which is super powerful and it's so huge kudos to you about that. Great. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing a few minutes with me. It's been such a blast. I had so much fun. And it's, you have such an amazing story. And I'm really glad that we were able to talk about it. And I learned so much. And I think your hashtag pay attention is super awesome and super cool. And it's definitely something that everyone, business, personal, anything in life, they can definitely relate and have that understanding of it. Absolutely. You got to pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Well, I really appreciate, again, you coming on and sharing a few minutes of your day with me. It's, I've had such a blast. Is there any last thing you'd kind of like to throw out there before I wrap it up? Did you want to ask me about what do I say to my younger self? Yeah, sure. I'd love okay. to hear a little bit more about that. <laughs> All right. If, if I could uh, go back and just really talk to my younger self, you know, I, I was one to never um, back down on my dreams or never let anyone deter me from achieving them and going after them with everything in me. Um, I was always fully committed to that. But what I would tell my younger self is to just be being open, um, understanding that when you reach a level of success where you have a platform or you're trying to get to a certain level, you know, just because you get disappointed doesn't mean you stop. Because a mm -hmm. lot of times we can feed ourselves negative energy and negative thoughts, and we allow that to stop us. So I would tell my younger self, don't stop. Keep going. Keep pushing. Utilize your platform. Utilize and ask people questions. No question is a stupid question. There are no dumb questions in life. Find a mentor in whatever situation that you're in and allow them to guide you. It's just like a coach. So I would just tell my younger self, hey, you know, be bold and, and be open and be courageous. Yeah, that's really important, especially when things get tough. It's really hard to remember that. But I think the constant memorization of, you know, being bold and being like, OK, it's, a, it's something that it's just going to happen in life. It's something that I can get through. Tomorrow is going to be a different day. Next week's going to be a different week. Next year is going to be a different year. And how can I transform what's happened to me and make that a better outcome? Absolutely. Absolutely. Pay attention. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate, as I said, you coming on, sharing a few minutes. I have had so much fun talking to you. It's just been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. And I appreciate your time as well. Mm -hmm.